Welcome back guys, welcome to another unexpected video actually, this one was not on the schedule um, but we have to do it because it's gonna be part of the game and I want to add it in the game of course, I don't want to add anything that you guys don't see. So let's go ahead and show you what this is, it's a simple timer, you can start it, add a couple of seconds to it, um, it shows minutes properly, it shows hours properly as well, it does everything you want. You can pause, unpause and reset the timer, so it's a normal text timer, um, yeah that's actually it. <laughs> Let's get right into it. Okay, so I went and I did some initial setup for our scene. I have a timer object, which is a text mesh pro object, as you can see over here. And on top of that, I have a couple of buttons that will all be connected to the, the script we're gonna be making in a second. So I have a button for starting, for adding five seconds, for adding 55 seconds, and then 3595, which is basically um, five seconds below one hour. Uh, pause and then reset timer. I have a button for all of that. Now what we're gonna be doing is to go ahead and create our timer. So I have my script right here called text timer. I'll drag and drop it directly on top of my timer. It doesn't have to be there. Um, you know, it can be really anywhere in your scene as long as you put the right reference in there, as long as you put the text mesh pro UGY reference. Let's go ahead and open it up. And we're going to start looking at what exactly do we need to make a timer happen. So I started by laying down two serializable fields. So those are going to be fields I can modify directly from the inspector. The first one is the reference to the text mesh pro we're going to be changing. And the second one is a character splitter. So in between my hours, my minutes, and then my um, seconds, I'm going to want to have like a small character that's going to be doing the splitting. In case you don't want that, you can always replace that by spacebar. So for me, I'll keep it simple and I'll take the two dots. And then the next thing we need is some kind of logic fields. We're going to need a timer, so something we increment every frame. And then also we're going to need to know whether or not it's active. All right, so next up, let's lay down our update loop. In here, we will be incrementing every single frame our timer in case it's active. So that means we're going to have an if statement. If it's active, we are going to increment timer by delta time. So time to delta time is something that is actually synchronized with, with real life, you could say. It's synchronized with um, every second you're going to receive a total of one. If it takes a full second in between two frames, then this is going to be one. Um, if it takes two seconds in between frames, this is going to be two. And if it takes one thirty-eight of a second, then it's going to be a number like that. But basically, after one second, you're going to receive one. Um, so this will match us. Next up we have a function down here called update text. So this function, the goal of this function is going to be to update the text mesh pro UGUI object, so this one. So we'll create it over here and we'll make sure that by the end we are going to be setting the text of our text mesh pro. It's going to look weird, it says text.text, .text, but basically we're using this type, so text. And then the text field inside of it is also called text. Um, if that confuse you, you can always say, do this. So change the name of the first field. Um, and that's gonna be equal to something we'll determine in a second. Let's go ahead at the top over here and start thinking, okay, so how do we actually get the amount of seconds that we've been within this? Well, we can use the modulo sign. So modulo is this sign over here. So the modulo operator, what it does, it gives you the remain of a uh, division. So basically, if you go over here and you say, okay, where well, timer is equal to 59, and you try to divide it by 60, you're not going to get to the 60, and therefore, um, you're going to stick with, with 59. If you get 61 over here, well, it's going to do 61 modulo 60, you get the remain of that. So the remain of that is going to be one. This will allow us to always go from zero to 60. And then after that, it's going to go back to one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So this is actually how we're gonna get our seconds. Now, as far as the minute goes, it's a little bit different. So here is the minutes. What we do is we take our full amount of time, we divide it by 60. So let's assume that we have um, 110 seconds, which is basically one minute and 50 seconds. We divide it by 60, and then we get this type of number, right? Um, it's not, two minutes just yet, but it's almost two minutes. So what we do is that we cast it as an int, and by casting it as an int, we reduce, well, we don't reduce, but we get rid of the remain. So we get rid of the 0.8323, it just becomes two, basically. 
And then after that, if we go beyond 60, we get the same type of mechanic going on over here. So if we go beyond 60, we're not gonna see 61 minute. We're gonna see one hour and then one minute. Um, and that's per minute, yeah. So next up is hours, finally. And this one is very simple. We just divide by 3,600, which, um, which gives us a full hour in seconds. And then of course we truncate it in case we need to. And that's how we do it. That's how we got all our fields over here. Now, next up, we're gonna have to actually um, change the way we format it. We're gonna have to do a two string on it first. So here's what we'll do. Under timer, the text will say, okay, well, let's grab our hours first, display that first, two string, zero, zero. This is going to force our text in giving us a zero before the hour. Assuming we're on 10 hours, it's going to look like this. So that's 10 hours, right? But here is five hours. Why? Because we're forcing our text to have two character in it. So um, it's going to give you a zero at the beginning. If you have 99, though, you're going to be you know, over here. And if you have a hundred, I'm not quite sure actually what's going to happen. Um, never really tried it out. I think it's simply going to give you a hundred like so. But um, you know, the odds that you actually get to a hundred on a a timer is, is quite quite big. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna add the character splitter. We could switch line, add minutes, and you know, just keep on going like this until we have everything we need. And we're not gonna need a character splitter at the end. So we got hours, splitter, minute, splitter, and then seconds. Now we can't really test it out because it looks for something that is active right now. And we don't have any active timer. Well, we don't have any way to activate it. So we're gonna go down here and actually create ourselves a very, very simple function. Actually, I'll lay down two function. First one is start timer, which is going to call my overload start timer with a float seconds as a parameter. Um, I'm putting that out there. It's not really necessary, but in case you wanna start a timer with some time already built in, like you're building up on say previous time or something like that, this will let you do it. Um, you just pass in the amount of seconds that you wanna see in the FS. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set the timer to active. So now our update logic works. Then we're going to set the timer on the amount of seconds. If we do have some, um, do know that we, if we're just calling start timer normally, um, we're gonna have that on zero. So timer is equal to zero, it's basically a reset. And then of course, we're gonna update the text once and then it's gonna be updated automatically here at the top. Okay, let's quickly give this a try, see if we have made any mistake in our update text function. So I'm back in the engine. I'm gonna make sure that I drag and drop my reference right here under text timer, and then I'll just I'll just put the um, text dot button. I'll just assign this one. Let's go down here, give it our text, and then let's see. Start timer. We could start with a float. No, let's just start it normally. Okay. Then we head in the game. I'm gonna press on my first button, and you can see it go up slowly like that and that seems to work but of course it's really hard to test out um, hours and minutes unless we wait for a good amount of time which of course we're not going to do we are simply going to add a couple of things so introducing three new function the first one is called add time in which we just add time to our actual timer and then we quickly update the text this is going to be for say penalties if you're playing like a racing game and you run into a civilian or something like that and you want to give penalty to the player um, then you can say, okay, add 10 seconds to his timer so he has a worse time at the end of the match. Um, that would work. Then pause timer is just putting that on inactive. It's also a unpause timer if you guys see the code over here. Um, if you press it twice, it's basically going to go back to being normal because you say, hey, if true, well, you say something like true is equal to not true. And, you know, it's just going to swap that Boolean value. And then finally reset timer put it back on zero and of course reset. This is not going to put it on inactive so you could reset a, a running timer which would be great say if you're doing laps, um, you don't have to call start timer after that. Okay, do we need anything else before I close this script off? We're gonna need one more thing that we're not gonna use today but um, it's gonna be useful maybe for if you're trying to get this score or trying to get this timer from another script. I'm gonna put a get time since start which is going to allow you to get the timer value because this one is private usually. So you can call this um, if you have a reference to this timer script. 
Okay, having that done, I'm gonna go and hook up all of these to the timer. So add five text timer, add time five, and I'll be back when I'm done. All right, so that was my last one. Reset timer, pause timer, had almost one hour, add almost uh, one minute, and then add five seconds. So we're going to press on play here and have a look if everything works. We're starting a timer, that's cool. Okay, we're getting a couple of seconds. Let's add a full minute, and here it is. Let's add a couple of full minutes. Here we are at 59 minutes. We're gonna give it a couple of five seconds, and let's see. Yep, we do get one hour. Let's go ahead and add another one. There it is, and another one. And here it is. Okay, so we get that. We can now pause our timer. It's gonna stop going up. Then unpause, clicking the same button. It's gonna come back and, and work. Um, we could pause it, add five seconds, add 55 seconds, unpause it, still works, and we can also reset our timer. All right, so we made a working text timer, guys. That said, thank you so much, and I will see you soon. Cheers. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'd like to remind everybody that we do have a schedule for um, the video release, of course, this month. However, it's gonna be skewed a little bit simply because I've changed stuff around. I filled in the last three spots and it might even extend a little bit into April as well. So, um, because I just wanna get more stuff out and of course, um, smaller video size, I do enjoy quite a lot and getting content out very fast is quite fun um, for me as well. So, 